Hello guys, welcome to Study IQ. I am Safir. In this session, we are going to continue our discussion on Maurya period. So we just started off with uh, the art and architecture. We completed Indus Valley Civilization and then uh, we just moved on to the Mauryan period. And in that, we have discussed about the pillars and we have already done the discussion on stupas. And we have discussed uh, all the important, you know, uh, uh, terms and everything which is connected to stupas. If you see, we have discussed about the nine most important stupas, right? Which was actually uh, constructed by Ashoka, which was with the relics of uh, Buddha. And then there are some other stupas which are using, you know, symbolic relics of Buddha. So stupas are basically something which is constructed upon the relics of Buddha. So these are that nine uh, important ones, Lumbini, Rajagriha, Kapilavastu, Vaishali, Ramagrama, you know, Pipalvina, Vidhapid, Kushinagar and Pava. So outside India also we discussed and we discussed about uh, Anuradhapuram in Sri Lanka. Okay, so uh, not only this nine, more than, you know, 84,000, close to 84,000 stupas were actually constructed. So we discussed about the Sachi Stupa and then this diagram, this figure we have discussed. We talked about uh, these gates, what these four gates signify, east, south, west and north, four gates, four Thoranas, four gates signify four different life stages of Buddha. What are they? These are the four different life stages, birth, Nirvana and then the Dharma Chakra Parivartan that is the first sermon which happened in Sarnath and then Mahapari Nirvaha. So you can see first one was at Lumbini. So the east gate signifies the birth that is at Lumbini. Then comes down, then comes south. So the south gate signifies the this one Nirvana, right? So that is what in Bodh Gaya. And then this one, the first sermon when he moved west. So the western side is Sarnath, okay, and then Kushinagar, that is the last stage, that is Maha Parinirvaha. So that is what I have actually marked over here. And apart from that, we have also discussed about this is what the relics you can see here, and then Medhi, Medhi, what is that meditating legs of Buddha, and then Anda, what is that? It represents the chest and abdomen of Buddha, and then what is this? Uh, Yasti, it is the head of Buddha, right? So we uh, covered this and if you see Yasti, you can see in that Danda and Harmika and Chatri. Now what is this Chatri? This Chatri, this three, you can see as the three jewels of Buddhism. So Chatri is actually the three Ratnas of Buddhism. So these uh, are the three jewels of Buddhism, three Ratnas of Buddhism, Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. So Vedika, also shows the Jataka stories that means tales of previous birth of Buddha. So these are what we have actually covered and then I have told you Thoranas are with the sculptures of Yakshini. Yakshinis are the folk goddess. So they used to worship the folk gods and folk goddesses during that period of time. Not only among Buddhism, even in Jainism, even in uh, uh, Hinduism also was there. Okay. So and uh, Sambhajiga Yakshini. It was there. So these are things that we have covered. I think we have discussed everything about this. So these four gates are important which represent the four life stages. Yasti, remember this. And Chatri, three jewels, remember that. So that's it guys. This is what I want to uh, go for a quick recap. And then this is the Vedika. That is the wall. Okay, the boundary wall. Okay. So today in this session, what we will do is we will be discussing about the caves. Okay, so first let's uh, discuss the caves and then we will move on to the sculptures. Okay, so let's uh, discuss the caves. Now guys, caves were already there. There were natural caves, but here some man-made caves are also constructed. And if you remember before I have told you that Ashoka, during Ashoka time, he started patronizing Buddhism, Jainism and Ajivika. So even though he is a follower of Buddhism, but with respect to his great respect towards uh, uh, his father and grandfather, he started patronizing Buddhism, Jainism as well as Ajivika and he have constructed caves for, uh, shel you know, shelter caves, right? So shelter of uh, Ajivika set. 
we already discussed about this so my point is already there were you know caves natural normal caves was there but then there were some decorations were made that means it was decorated the already existing natural caves and also there made some new caves that means some man made caves are also made so decoration means the polishing you know uh, fixing the new gates fixing the wall uh, polishing work and all those things has been done and made it more you know looking good by decorating it and uh, more artistic gateways at the entrances and these gateways are also given this uh, semi circular shape semi circular shape was given for what do you mean by that it's like something like this okay it, i may not be able to draw so something like this and then some kind of decoration like this will be given so this is how the entrance look like so there are natural caves which is decorated man made caves are also made and one point which you can write is ashoka patronized the caves actually and uh, he initially made caves for shelter of ajivika sect although he patronized all the three but he made shelter caves for ajivika sect and other examples which can be asked in prelims like uh, other examples are lomas rishi cave in barber hills barber hills okay so gaya in bihar okay and then uh, you can also write about sudama and that is in nagarjuna hills both are in gaya nagarjuna hills in bihar both are in gaya bihar okay so uh, these two are apart from that uh, you know you can also write about this rock cut cave rock cut cave at dhauli but in 2015 they have asked a question that was related to rock cut elephant sculpture which is also at dhauli so you can write that also rock cut elephant sculpture which is also in dhauli which is in odisha so the first two these two that i have discussed was in gaya bihar and this this two rock cut cave and rock cut elephant sculpture is actually in odisha okay dhauli so this was rocket elephant was actually a prelims question in 2015 so that's about uh, uh, caves we will discuss about the sculptures and we will also discuss about the pottery now so let's look into sculptures so guys i have told you already that uh, before i have discussed about yakshini right so yakshini is the folk goddesses and yaksh means folk god so they used to worship the yakshinis and yaksh that means they used to worship the folk goddess and uh, folk gods across india north india south india there are evidences in you know if you see silapadigaram uh, which is one of the uh, which is in tamil nadu if you see one part of sangam literature so silapadigaram there are evidences that they used to worship the uh, folk goddesses and gods same way if you see jainism jainism this yakshan yakshinis are quite prevalent there are 24 tirthankars right in jainism and these 24 tirthankars are actually represented by 24 yakshinis so there used to be 24 yakshinis for the 24 tirthankars so mahavir is the last one 24th one and together is what you see uh, entire this buddhist jainism is all about so jainism is also you know worshiping in fact i just want to tell you that all the religions are actually respecting and worshiping uh, folk gods and folk goddesses and not only in north india in south india also so across india and across religion these folk gods and goddesses are worshiped that means the the yakshinis and yaksh are actually worshiped so if you see hinduism hinduism the worship of yakshin is quite common in saptamatrika puja saptamatrika 
puja and same way in buddhism also these are the three prevalent religion at that point of time jainism hinduism and buddhism so these three are respecting okay and in buddhism buddhism uh, yakshin is actually synonymous with some auspicious occasion and it is respected very well in buddhism also and if you see in tamil epic the most important one is like silapadivaram which is part of sangha literature there are evidences about the worship of folk goddesses in that also so my point is yakshis yakshinis and yaksh are worshiped across india across religion these are the three main religions right mainly at that point of time so that's a and uh, if you see sculptures so because of this as i've told you uh, because of these uh, you know respect and worship towards these yakshis and yakshinis the sculptures of the yakshis and yakshinis were very common during that period of time so in that era the sculptures are actually very common you will see a lot of sculptures of yakshis yakshinis and yakshi for example if you talk about example yakshini of uh, didarganj my pronunciation may not be correct yakshini of didar ganj it you know this these words when i pronounce or when you pronounce it will be entirely different so north india south india that difference is there apart from that person to person also this will vary so this is near patna bihar and then uh, one more example that i can give us yaksh and yakshini sculpture yaksh and uh, yakshini sculpture at barbud barbud or barhut it's in madhya pradesh okay and then i have already discussed about this uh, salbanjiga yakshini in the sachi stupa salbanjiga yakshini on sachi stupa guys we have discussed about that already here so in the toranas i told you there are sculptures of yakshinis right so we are now talking about yaksh sculptures so sculptures of yakshinis and yaksh is very common so in the toranas which is nothing but the gates there are four gates okay and that four gates signify four life stages and in this the uh, sculptures of yakshini is there and this is one which you can find there salbanjiga yakshini holding branches of sal tree okay so that's about uh, the sculptures mainly the sculptures of yaksh and yakshini the reason is both yaksh and yakshini the folk gods and goddesses were respected and worshiped at that point of time across religion so it is very common okay so the examples also you have seen now let's look into the next that is pottery with this we will be uh, completing this mauryan period and then we will enter into post mauryan period so pottery uh, guys name given to mauryan pottery it is n b p w northern black polished ware northern black polished where so this itself will tell you what is the color the black color so this is the color and this also will tell you it is highly polished okay so it is actually the climax of pottery making so these are very you know looking good and very highly polished so if you see normal pottery if you make and the kind of soil or the clay the clay is what you use and for that when you take the soil it has to be fine particles if there are some uh, materials which is unwanted like kind of stones and hard material is there it is very difficult because if it may come like stuck like this you know in the edges and while polishing it won't look good and it will be difficult also so what they do is they will take fine particles of soil and for that one technique they use the method used for the construction of pottery is this is something which can be asked in prelims levigation technique so guys how the question can be asked levigation technique is associated with which among the following pottery making so what they do is they'll take a sieve something like this and they'll put the soil in that and then they will get the fine particles under that there will be holes through that you'll get the fine particles so you'll get that fine proper soil 
without any uh, you know uh, uh, you know that stones or anything this is what normally you will do nowadays also when you are constructing your house you want that sand so what you will do first you will just uh, remove all the uh, stones and all which is there in the sand right so that's exactly what you're doing here also something which has to do with uh, gravity so that is why this name levigation technique is uh, actually used so levigation technique is associated with pottery making so this is something which is very important just remember this so why you are doing this because you need to get the good soil and what is the advantage the pottery the one which you have made will be really good and it is easy to polish and things will become easy also so this technique is all about the fine soil particles were filtered through a sieve okay and this this soil which is filtered through this technique is what used for the construction of pottery and then it will be polished so it will be easily polishable so guys this is what you need to know from the pottery what they can ask you is about this one levigation technique so this is what you need to know from this pottery and from this you need to know about the Salbanji from the sculptures you need to mainly know the examples and Yaksha and Yakshini it is respected across religion so it was common and Salbanjiga Yakshini it is in the Toranas of uh, Sanchi Stuba you will see okay and then Yaksh Yakshini sculpture in Barbuj and then this one also okay so that's about the sculptures and Jainism the 24 Tirthangas there are 24 Yakshini associated with that Hinduism also Saptamatriga Puja is related to the folk goddess and in Buddhism also related to auspicious occasion Tamil epic Silapadigaram which is part of Sangam literature is also having mention or evidence is related to the worship of folk goddess and caves uh, I told you there were natural caves but what he did he started decorating that uh, constructing gateways and then polishing and all those things have been done so the gateways are like semi-circular in shape and he has made a lot of uh, uh, caves the shelter caves for Ajiviga sect and these are examples Lomas Rishi cave Barber Hills in Gaya and then this one Sudanu and then Nagarjuna hill and then rock cut cave Dauli rock cut elephant sculpture something which you can write in the other one rock cut elephant sculpture again in Dauli both in this is Odisha so this we have discussed already because this is about uh, Mauryan period so what we have done in Mauryan period we discussed about the pillars we discussed about the sculptures caves and then uh, we, uh, we have also discussed about the stupas okay and then finally we discussed the pottery so if you look for the chronology of events what we have done so far so chronology when we discuss about ancient India let's I'll just discuss about the chronology because that is actually going to help you in the coming ses session also first stone age and in that we have paleolithic and then mesolithic and then neolithic so paleolithic is from or neolithic is basically from you know just before in Indus Valley Civilization so you know Indus Valley Civilization is 2500 BC so this is from 10,000 BC to 2500 BC so 2500 onwards it is Indus Valley Civilization so 2500 to 1800 so this one will be 10,000 BC to uh, like 40,000 BC to 10,000 BC so this will be 1 lakh BC to 40,000 BC so this is how the stone age okay and then we have this Indus Valley civilization that is 2500 BC to 1800 BC I told you how it came to an end mainly due to it could be flood and then we have Chalcolithic Chalcolithic that is from 1800 to 1500 BC and then comes the Vedic period Vedic period this you will divide into early Vedic and later Vedic early Vedic 1500 BC to 1000 BC and this is 1000 BC to 
600 BC that's the birth of Buddha from there onwards it is going to be different next phase okay so Mauryan period will be seen so guys what we did is I have discussed about Indus Valley civilization in this section because we are focusing on art and architecture and I skip this because there is nothing related to art and architecture is there even this also we have nothing related to art and architecture that's why I just skipped on to the Maurya period but again if you follow the same chronology uh, you know around this 800 to 700 BC this is very important because that is where the second wave of urbanization and rise of Mahajanpadas rise of Maha Janpadas during this time and you know in between this period 600 to 500 that means Buddha birth of Buddha to during this period this is the consolidation consolidation of Maha Janpadas uh, guys I'll be discussing everything don't worry about this ancient India we are yet to start so we have done with only art and architecture area all these things need to be covered in detail in ancient India. So that's why you may face some confusion here. But I'm only discussing the chronology, the order. So rise of Mahajanpadas, okay, and then second wave of urbanization, and then consolidation of Mahajanpadas during this time, and 16 Mahajanpadas have actually emerged. And Magadh became the largest and the strongest. And then comes uh, this dynasty, Haryanka dynasty which was established by Bimbisara okay and this emerged as the largest so after this you will see Ajat Shatru excuse me about my the pronunciation Ajat Shatru and after that Udayin so actually these are part of Haryanka dynasty and then after this you will see Shishunaga right dynasty so Shishunaga and then Kala Shok. Okay, so this is Shishunaga dynasty. Before that, it was Haryanga dynasty. And the last ruler of Shishunaga dynasty was actually murdered by Nanda rulers. And then comes Nandas. And after Nandas, Mauryas. Okay, so and that is in 321 BC, Chandragupta Maurya established so this is nandas and after nandas mauryas and chandragupta maurya was assisted by chanakya okay and then his son and then his grandson is ashoka so that's what the discussion that we have done so far and i hope you understood what all things we have discussed so far all these even the chronology will be discussed in detail when it comes to ancient india here in this module we just covered a short module where i discussed about art and architecture in indus valley civilization and then the mauryan period now next session will be the post mauryan period okay so i hope you understood everything that we have discussed guys if you like the video give me a thumbs up see you soon in the next session thank you so much for watching